Brad, where do you see Bitcoin headed? Well, you know, I mean, obviously the big question here after this big sell-off and six-day losing streak is you know, where's where do we stop, right? I mean, it, it, nobody's looking up right now. People are just wondering where we're going to stop. Uh, and, you know, this $22,000 level uh, had been seen as a pretty key level based on the technical charts and you know, now that we're below that, uh, yeah, people are looking down. Um, whether that is twenty thousand, you know, that's probably the, you know, the next point that people will be looking at, kind of the psychological threshold around that level. You know, um, sounds from a like price standpoint. Yeah, it sounds like uh, Bitcoin has fallen to a hole. And speaking of hole, Jackson Hole. Um, we got that conference coming up next week. Uh, any thoughts on what we should look out for or, or you know, what to expect? Well, our economics reporter, Helene Braun, has a really good story out today. And it just makes the point that, you know, the Fed is just using every single opportunity it has to kind of condition markets. And it's just, you know, the, 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 the all of what we're seeing in the markets on any given day is just they're trying to dial in collectively what people see in the future and of course and her her story makes a great case of you know what they map out for that future never ends up happening uh and so you know i expect more of the same next week powell you know there's really it's not a meeting it's it's just like an academics con academic conference it's a chance for them all to get together out in you know Grand Teton National Park and and they it's really nice weather and it's really pretty out there but the only thing that really happens generally speaking is is the chair of the Federal Reserve gives a speech and they'll use that speech to basically condition expectations for the September meeting which just means it's just another day of conditioning the market so uh, and lately they've been kind of pushing to make sure people realize they're still going to be pretty aggressive on risky assets how about you, Christy? What are you looking at? Well, I mean, to sort of uh, go back to what we were talking about with Riot last week, um, it was, you know, as we said last month, turning off machines, and there's been a lot of downturn for some of the, for the miners in the market. There's been impairment charges, um, and other companies have had to restructure their debt, and we knew that all this was going to shake out. But having said that, the hash rate for Bitcoin is actually getting back up to its all-time high. Um, we are seeing miners still mining and doing their thing, and the blocks are being mined at a very reasonable rate. We had the difficulty adjust ups for the second adjustment period in a row, so that's been pretty good. Um, what we are also seeing is that, I mean, Riot managed to also get its hash rate up even though it's it went you know it turned stuff off it still has 44,720 miners with a hash rate capacity of 4.4 exahashes per second so it's actually on pace to pretty much go with the hash rate gro growth guidance that it set for itself uh, at the first quarter of the year so that's everything is is going on track so i think what will be interesting is to see what happens with the other miners and how they are going to sort of come out of the summer we're reaching the end of the summer and the electricity costs are going to obviously go in different directions so uh, it'll be interesting to see where the hash rate starts to go 